we're here to look at how to take apart uh, an M-Box 2. As you can see, I've already removed most of, uh, I guess, the visible screws on the back panel, holding this back panel on. Uh, and on this front panel, uh, we've removed just all of these, uh, these knobs, as you can see, placing them over there. And what we found, though, is that the chassis is not really uh, in any great hurry to get out of there. You can peel this back and get access to one, two, and three screws just inside there, but uh, really not much is shifting. So the next step, the main step, is to remove this front uh, fascia kind of sticker on panel here. This is kind of the way that, that happens. Now what you need is a flat, uh, flat implement of some description, probably a knife or even a really thin screwdriver. Um, and I'm going to go the thin screwdriver route here. Now, uh, this is one that I prepared earlier, so this is going to come up a little bit easier than it otherwise may. One thing that could be helpful, you can see this just come up now, uh, is to have a second screwdriver handy, because if you have the second screwdriver, then you can, uh, once you get it up a little bit, grab the other one and wedge it in. Um, now, once you've done that, simply peel this layer off, which, uh, now this is going to mean that you're going to need to glue it back on. Uh, once you're done. But as you can see, there are a lot of extra screws that expose themselves uh, as you go all the way across. Now once you get past this panel, there's going to be, you can see, uh, stickers completely intact. No harm done. Now the next thing you're likely to notice uh, when you remove this is that uh, all of uh, these little plastic connectors as well as the buttons uh, are essentially just floating, suspended on the surface. This will lift out uh, as you can see, more or less with the screws still intact, but uh, these are going to fly all over the place if you're not quite careful uh, in removing them. Now these ones are a bit more bulky than the ones that sit over towards where the, the regular sort of power indicator and USB indicator are, um, but these are going to just fall straight off, so make sure that you put these uh, in a safe place. Uh, again, it's worth noting that uh, these kinds of connectors are different to the, the power ones, uh, and some of them for some reason have got uh, heat shrinking around them also. The next up you'd likely notice we've just did a couple of screws that sit along the top of the inbox. As you can see, I've taken one way down, another one's halfway. Uh, these are basically what's holding on. You can see the Digidesign logo just on the top there. This whole top part of uh, the fascia kind of faceplate thing is uh, being held on by just those four screws. So we're going to go about taking those off now. Similarly on this lower side there's a screw here and here as well as these three screws which are accessible by uh, just peeling back this plastic uh, plate here even while it's still attached. Uh, what we're going to do now is remove these last two screws and we may need to remove these as well, I'm not sure, we'll see how we go. Okay so I've just been mucking around with this for the better part of 20 minutes and uh, I've gotten no further. Now the advice online is that you take it from the back and go push which pulls the case off, but there are a few things stopping that in this particular model, one of which is these uh, this soft uh, soft pads that I guess probably serve to do some just uh, increasing the stickiness of this whole thing. It looks like there's one inside uh, just in there as well, uh, though, oh, there we go, yeah, so that thing that the light's on right now uh, is the pad on the other side as well. All you have to do is crack basically these side bits open. Uh, now they're not look, going to look like they want to, one of the things that's going to stand in your way is these uh, bits of green adhesive glue which will uh, adhere to screw holes or, or PCB mounts uh, coming through. So uh, once you've done that, it's just a matter of cracking open uh, the various screws along the side. I'm counting eight in total and once you've done that you'll have access to the PCB which uh, has two layers, so it's a top and a bottom layer. Um, and in my case the point of interest is this uh, really cruddily soldered USB. Uh, we just lift and the whole thing will open up in this direction. So the headphone socket's on the top board. And as you can see, the rest of this is lifting quite neatly out of there. And for the ribbon cables connecting it all. And, uh, okay. These are all fairly well labelled and in fact if you can just remove uh, the two uh, if you're looking at, uh, I guess, the rear surface of it, uh, with the bottom facing down to leftmost connectors. Connect both of those from the motherboard end, then you'll be able to hinge the whole 
thing back quite comfortably. Um, that gives you ready access at least to look uh, at whatever else is going on. And here lies the remains of Mbox's ever so useful USB port. Uh, meanwhile, this is our, our new slightly shiny one we've just put in now. Mm. The way the top mount works is quite different, so hopefully uh, we'll see that there'll be a lot more resistance to movement, which will be good. Uh, same thing, gold pins, all the rest of it. Uh, if you're in Australia, you can buy this from JCar. I'm sure there are plenty of other places around the world that you can source these things from if you're elsewhere. Uh, I found the screwdriver. The easiest way to get this thing off was basically to just destroy it, which, you know, at this stage in the game, I felt surprisingly okay with. So, um, in all, it was, yeah, pretty straightforward. So, we're about to solder this, uh, I guess, back on to, to the main board. Uh, as it is, the only thing to watch when you're soldering is, um, I guess, just these two... Uh, so I think it'll be FB1 and FB2 here uh, have, uh, they're the things that the USB kind of feeds directly through. So if you can just try and keep the heat down and not cook those, that'd be uh, excellent. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, go for gold. That was pretty easy to replace. Now what I've done, uh, just to get this going back together quickly and easily, I've put in two screws just in the centre here. Uh, if you've taken it apart and lost track of them, they're easy to identify because they're the ones with the... Uh, the green gunk on the end of them. They're normally, uh, there's some sort of adhesive basically that's trying to hold them to the bottom of the chassis, as I'm sure uh, you recall. That glue is a real pain in the bum. Now, uh, once you've done that, it's simply a matter of uh, reattaching this plate, uh, and you can do this temporarily just to test uh, really, really easily. Uh, there's not a lot that sort of sits in the way, as we were showing before. Uh, it will easily fold up as a lid, like that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just attach. Uh, the rest of those you know, ribbon cables and uh, we're going to see if this thing works still. And now as you can see, uh, it's, the housing's gone on more or less uh, completely. Um, bear in mind, you've only got uh, two screws attached in the middle of the thing, so it's not an ideal way to leave it. Uh, we're going to return in just a moment, but before we do uh, anything further, uh, it's USB time. We'll see if it turns on. Okay, so we've got a USB cable. Uh, this is much better than the original uh, socket, and we're about to plug it into a computer. And I'm gonna, just going to move this camera around, and we'll see if the lights turn on. No black smoke yet. We are greeted by a variety of lights, which is always nice. And by pressing buttons, I can change what stuff does. Meanwhile, uh, the computer thinks it's. Uh, about installing some device driver software that's only because it's a different USB port to usual and Windows is a mite special about the way it does that sort of thing. It's done installing uh, the device software. So the easiest way by far to get uh, all of these fiddly little bits back into the main body of the box uh, is simply to uh, assemble it that way up, turn this upside down and then connect them in that direction so we're going to do that now so as you can see uh, the, the LEDs are in place the clicky buttons are all there check that they're actually clicking and working because if they're slightly misaligned you may have some issues there uh, and then once you're done with it uh, simply go about uh, getting these screws and starting to put them in well in all it's a good result uh, what we're looking at is basically a completed Mbox has been reassembled, uh, no hassle whatsoever. The one problem uh, uh, with with it as it stands is, uh, as we knew would be the case, there is a minor, minor, minor gap uh, just on this side here uh, because we had to split uh, this plastic casing. Uh, now you can fix that just by using some epoxy on the inside. I've chosen not to. Uh, white gaff will definitely suffice for now. Um, in case there's ever a need to get back inside and white epoxy is just going to make that uh, that much more difficult. Now somewhat alarmingly there are actually uh, three little screws left and I have no idea where they came from. But it's holding together, it's functioning beautifully and uh, the USB connection is much more steady than it is, uh, was before at least. Um, I'm going to look at replacing this uh, USB cable to something that's uh, a little shorter because this is just an accident waiting to happen. It's just such a large plug. Uh, it's fine if it's sitting next to, uh, you know, your phono jack 6.5 mil quarter inch kind of TRS things uh, in terms of length. But unfortunately, those very same quarter inch things extend that far inside the chassis instead of that far, 
and accordingly a bit of give on that is going to be much less of an issue. So we're going to look at uh, finding a shorter USB cable to do that with and uh, hopefully in doing so prevent this from recurring. Um, the, the good news is that uh, our, our off-the-shelf uh, USB port socket thingy replacement here uh, is uh, well fitted, it's it's uh, functioning perfectly well. Um, the mount's exactly the same. If you're in Australia, you can order the same part from JCAR. If you're not in Australia, um, it's a regular common USB part. It really shouldn't be that hard to find. Uh, if all else fails, find someone who's chucking out a printer, got it, get the USB port, get on with your life. Beautiful. So that's how you tear apart a Mbox 2 uh, by DigiDesign. And best wishes in your uh, endeavours to fix stuff that's broken.